Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor projects every single week. A new one, new project, new steps. It's a lot of fun. New colors? New colors, most of the time. Yeah. Great. This week we are doing the lion. Roar. <laughs> I was hoping you would roar so bad and I'm so glad you did it. It's like we're here. It was like, Kaden, please roar and I didn't have to say it. <laughs> Okay, this might seem pretty intimidating. It's not, you guys, you can do this. You just have to stick with me and do not judge your animal halfway through because let me tell you what, animals always look funky in the middle of your painting. So just wait for the end, okay? Don't give up until you're at the end. We have two brushes that we're using around six and around two. Hank and Keith. Hank and Keith, you decide which is what. Oh. I'm not gonna tell them this time. Nice. You decide which one is what. <laughs> You decide. <laughs> and we have uh, five steps to this project. So the very first step is we are going to do an overall soft, really light wash on the face, just on the face. The second step is we are gonna put in these low value areas. So underneath the eyes, like the middle of the forehead, the sides of the mouth, all that kind of stuff. I'll walk you through where to put it. Step number three, we're gonna do the main right there. Step number four, we're gonna put in the color on the eyes and the nose. The fifth step, we're gonna go in and put in these black areas. And step number six, I put two step four, so my numbers oh, were off. Tricky. That's why. <laughs> step number six is just detail. Taking that second to really look at your painting and see if there's any adjustments you need to make before you call it done. Now, I will like to give you a little Thing about this painting. Lions might seem scary, but they are wonderful in the same way that flamingos and elephants are wonderful, which is they have such a strong characteristic that you can totally tell what it is while you're painting it. So a flamingo, it's just gotta be pink and people are like, flamingo, done. With an elephant, they got that trunk. They're like, that's an elephant, done. Lion, they have that huge mane. So. This is the fun thing about painting animals that have like a very strong characteristic because it's like people can tell that's a lion. So just a little breather for you. It's not that bad. Okay, so we're using four colors in this project. The very first color is lemon yellow. The second color is tangerine. The third color is fuchsia. And the last color is black. So essentially it's like yellow, orange, pinkish, black. Those are our colors. Okay, now here is my lion. And I just wanna show you guys something. We have outlines on our website. So if you order a kit or a subscription, the outline's in the kit or the box, or you can just download the outline on our website. Just find the square box that says outline, click on it, and there's the outline. And when you use graphite paper, I go over how to use it in tutorials, but I wanna give you guys a little hint, which is if you use a felt tip marker when you're outlining, because it's a soft point, you're not gonna get a hard line. So this is like normal pressure with a marker. And then I'll show you with a pencil or a pen what it looks like with the same pressure. Felt marker, regular pen. Dang. So if you do super light pressure with the marker, like just like barely touching, you are gonna get a really fine line like that. You can't even see that. I can't even see But that. I can see it. And that's kind of what we want when we're doing outlines. Now I darken my outline so it can show up on the video. When you're doing this at home, try and get as barely there line as you possibly can. And if you're having trouble doing that with a pen or pencil, try a felt tip marker and that will help you make a softer line. Okay? Say okay. Okay. Okay, great. Let's get started. Step one, we're gonna do a soft wash over the entire face. So I'm gonna take a little bit of orange. Just like, I like to put my paints on the edge of my tray because there's like a curve in the middle and they're supposed to be like that. So if yours is like that, it's not wrong. And then I pull colors to the middle to mix, add water, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this tangerine, mix water with it. So it's a really, really soft, almost like a tan color. And then I'm just gonna go and put this color 
throughout. I'd like to say khaki. Oh, that's a good color. Thank you. Khaki. Khaki. <laughs> so just a really soft, make sure that this is really, really light. To make a color light in watercolor, you add water to it. That is the difference. So really make sure this is a light value that you're putting in here. Avoid the nose. And I'm not going to do the bottom part of this fur because that's actually going to stay white, like the chin of lions is, is white. We'll put a little bit of color when we, uh, when we put it in, but for the most part it's, it's going to stay that white color. That outline makes that lion look tired. <laughs> yeah. He'll be serious though. Here, we put that there so you guys can see the reference as I'm going. Now, by like around the nose, I kept it mostly white, like there's a slight color to it, but again, a little bit. If you go and you put your first color down and you like do that and you're like, ooh, that's too dark, that's too dark, breathe, take your paper towel and just soak up the extra color. So don't stress out. You can totally make adjustments. You can lift up color just using water and a paper towel or even your paintbrush. Okay, that's step one. Good job, you guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we're gonna move on to step two. We are gonna start to put in the darker values on our lion. So if you're looking at our lion, you're gonna look at the parts that are dark. So I'm looking right here, like right in between on the forehead, underneath the eyes, right on top of the eyes, kind of around the top of the head and around the edges of the mouth. So this part is really important because with these different values, that's how we communicate that it's three-dimensional. That's how we make things come forward and how we make things recede. So if you want things to, like, like looking at the mouth, the front of the mouth is highlighted because it's right there. The sides of it have a darker value and are shadowed because they're turning away from us and going away from the light. This is darker because the nose sticks out more than the forehead. So our forehead will be a darker value than our nose. And that's how we can communicate the different planes of the facial structure. And this is true for people, any animals, all of those things. That's how we can communicate what is forward and what is back values. If you make it all one value and you don't have any shading or any kind of that change in value, it's gonna look totally flat like we're on one plane. But you can see like our nose pokes out, our forehead, our chin, our cheeks go back, like depending on the face, you know? Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so I'm gonna try and mix a brown. So I'm gonna grab some orange. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this fuchsia. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. Oh, that was a lot of black. Okay, no worry, just add some more orange. There we go. So here's a nice dark brown. So I'm gonna start with right underneath the eyes. Now I do have some areas outlined. So on the outline you can see where some shadows start or where there's highlights. So really make sure that you're paying attention to the reference and see how they line up. This part, like above the eye, this little bunny looking thing, that's the shadow. The area around it is the highlight part. So just try and match it up. The other thing I would like to say with outlines is they are not this is not a paint by numbers project, as in you are not staying in the lines. We want things to transition and blend. So if I'm putting in my brown here, I'm gonna do it in the outline, and then I'm going to kind of blend that transition out. Like so. Okay. The other thing I would like you to do, just because it's fun, and even though it might seem a little bit like, wait, are you sure? is really play with these drops of yellow and a little bit of like fuchsia. So if I mix my fuchsia and my orange together, I'm gonna get this really wonderful like deep red. And I love playing with like highlights or like little areas of just strong color. So don't be afraid to be like, I wonder what it would look like if I dropped like that pink red right in the middle there. You, you know, you can see these spots on the lion where I really played with that. So don't be afraid to try that in your own painting. And he is a lion. He eats 
other animals. He, there's no probably way. blood on his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Circle of life. <laughs> I've seen the Lion King. I see the Lion King. So we're just going to keep going around and just kind of putting in these dark areas. And if you want to kind of like put in the dark areas and then blend them out, like after you put a few in, that works too. I do that. And if you go outside the outline, it's not a big deal, you guys. It's not a big deal at all. There's going to be different markings on different lions and... They'll have different personalities, and it's okay. So I'm grabbing some dark brown, put that in. Let's grab a little bit of this gray orange, drop that in, kind of spread it out. Now I have this outline here because we want it to be clear that like in between the eyes, like right here, and you'll notice it on animals and things like that, is it's farther back than this bridge in the top of our nose. So this area is actually going to be shaded. So I'm just going to take some water in the color that's already there and just start blending out. And you see how adding that dark value in there automatically just pushes it back? So great. I love art. Okay. Now we're going to do that. It has like little ridges right here on the nose. And then let's put in some shading on the sides of the mouth. So I always like wherever it's the darkest part, that's where I like to put my color. And then... I rinse my brush once or twice, hit it off the side, and then just blend out the rest of the way. And you can drop in pops of color here. I did a strong yellow on the front part of the mouth, so go ahead and grab some of that yellow and just blend that baby out. looks very odd upside down. Does it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I want a little bit of like warmth on the mouth too, so I'm going to grab some of this like orange color. Whoa. And your brain might be like, that's really strong. But for me, I'm just going to leave that for a second. I don't think I did anything wrong. I just want to see, I just want to see what it would be like if I left it there because I just really like that color. So I'm just going to leave it and I'm not going to let it bother me. And I'm not going to freak out because sometimes you have to sit with things a while before you can make a decision on it, you know? And it seems like with watercolor, it kind of takes on different textures the longer you let it sit. Yeah. So For it's completely dry. sure. It's so funny, every time I paint a lion, it kind of reminds me of a clown. Doesn't it? Yeah, I can see that. Like every time I paint one, I'm just like, it's just like the clown of the freaking animal kingdom. Like it has the same markings. Except it's the king. <laughs> you take that back. No offense, I'm just saying. Like the markings are, they remind me so much of a clown that it, that's what I feel like I'm painting. That's so funny. I think it's the markings around the eyes. Okay, so you can see I've like started putting in some darker values. I really like that pop of orange. I'm going to leave it. I kind of want to put it in other places. I'm going to do it right kind of underneath here, maybe more towards the top. But the biggest thing to remember of where there's really the strongest value, like the darkest value that you are going to put is going to be this forehead right underneath the eyes kind of on the sides of the face and then on the mouth, the edges of the mouth. And always with watercolor, you can do layers. So if you want to start out light, you absolutely can. And then you can always just layer on top of it if it's too light and not communicating how you want it to. So don't stress if you're just like, oh, I painted this and it turned it up too light in value. Guess what? You could just do another layer. Not a big deal at all.
Now, in these areas where we can see the light value, now because we put in so much color, doesn't that look almost like white now compared to it? So what I like to do a little bit is like, I'll just do like one little swoosh across to give it a little bit extra color, but not be the same value as everything else. So it's still the highlight, but I brought it up to color a little bit more. I need some more yellow. Let's put some yellow in there. Now, same thing for like around the top of the eyes. I'm just gonna grab a little soft wash of like orange and yellow and put that in there again. Now, if your original layer of that soft wash was maybe a little bit darker, you don't have to do this part. So look at your painting and just be like, I wanna make sure it's a lighter layer, a lighter value, but I don't want it to seem like it's white. So you then decide from there, what is the best way to handle that? And I'm just kind of blending out these hard lines. Oh yeah, that looks good. And you are gonna get some fun, different, because we're doing so many layers, you're gonna get some blooms and some watercolor textures. So it like automatically when you do layers of watercolor, you're gonna get hard lines of where water kind of has stopped and has dried at different times. Embrace that. It's very cool. It's like the best thing about watercolor. So don't try and blend them out. You can sometimes, but like, I don't want you to think that you need to because it's bad. It's not bad. It's like the coolest part about it. I'm just darkening it up right in between the forehead just a smidge more. Maybe the edges of this mouth a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Great, I think we're ready to move on. Okay, we're gonna move on to step three. Let me make sure that I said the right step. Pretty sure it is. Yes, step three, we're gonna do the mane. Now here is the really wonderful part about the mane. This is the biggest thing you gotta, you gotta make sure. So with manes, they connect. <laughs> so with manes, they connect at the head and then they like puff out from there. So they like come in and like are sometimes attached to like the back part, maybe not even this part, but like also back here, which means that we wanna make it clear that like the face itself, like the skull ends and then it's hair, which means the darkest parts are gonna be around the face. And then it's a lighter value from there. And then that shows that it's like, it kind of goes in. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay, great. So I'm gonna pick up some dark brown and I'm just gonna work around the face. Now I'm gonna be doing swooping motions and change the angle of my brush as I go around the face. So I'm gonna do like swoosh, swoosh, like this. If you're not comfortable with changing the angle of your brush, it would still work if you rotate your paper, yes? Yes. So, um, yeah, if you're okay with making this motion, then just switch, keep, you see? Yes. Okay, great. So. I mean, yes I do. <laughs> so, I would suggest doing a little section at a time. I know I did more, but the reason why we want to do a section at a time is because we'll put this dark part in, and then we're gonna just use some water and kind of like blend out from there. What? And then we just use water. So the goal here is at the very edge of where the hair ends, really light value, barely their color. As it gets closer to the face, it's gonna get darker and that's gonna communicate that it's starting here, it's going out and getting puffy. And the really fun thing about this and why I love watercolor is whenever we have these vast areas of just like water, you can really play with color and texture. So don't be afraid to be like, you know what, this section, this is a yellow section and leave it there. 
So don't be afraid to play with those colors. It adds interest to your painting. It makes it yours too. So I'm just grabbing color, putting the color in initially, and then just rinsing my brush and using water to spread out that color as I get towards the end. Is that cool? It's sweet. And then when you get to the end, I don't want the texture to be all of the same, as in I'll do this in dark so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Don't get to the end and do this. Because you see how all those things are the same thicknesses? We want to like, hair is more complicated than that. So there are chunks that do that, and then there are chunks that like, go out funky. And maybe they come back in, and then they go back out. So that reads way more realistic as a hair edge than this. Okay. Side note, those are some pretty cool value changes in those examples. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, so good. Mm, mm, good. So I'm gonna be like swoosh. Let's have some go out a little bit thicker. I'm gonna have some thin out. So you can go all the way to the edge and then do like the different shapes around the edge at a different time if you want. Like, just be aware of it. I don't want you to ignore the edge. It's important that there's variation in thickness and lines and color. If it's all the very same shape along the entire thing, it's just gonna flatten it. I don't know why that is, but that's what I've noticed. So, now I'm gonna grab some orange, cause why not, you know? Maybe some yellow. And now I'm just gonna rinse my brush using the color that's already there. And I'm using my round six because I can fill in the space faster. Maybe someone will rainbow this lion. Oh, 100% someone will rainbow this lion. Um, in uh, I've, the book I just illustrated that was just released yeah. called Sisterhood. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I did a lion in it, but I did it in uh, like a galaxy. So it's blue and black and purple with stars and stuff. It's so cool. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So you're just gonna make your way across the main of this lion. If you have to do a couple of, um, a couple of runs to make sure it, that that darkest value is around the head, that's okay. If you gotta do a couple layers to do that, that's just fine. So I'm gonna try and just do kind of little chunks at a time. Pick up some orange and yellow, put that in there, mix it in, let it get messy, let it get muddy, let it just do its thing. Watercolor just wants its freedom, you know? And if you really want to add some color, mix a little bit of that tangerine with that fuchsia and you're gonna get this great red. So don't be afraid to plop that in there some places, you know? Why not? Now, the reason why I want you to pick up color as you add it and add these oranges and yellows and these bright pops is because if I just use this dark color I'm using, look at that color. It's just like brown, which I like a good brown, but I don't want a boring brown or a dull brown. So that's why it's like, don't be afraid to just put some other color in there. Look how much more life is in that. Yeah. Ugh. So if your line is just looking a little bit drab, maybe you need to do a little bit more pops of color. Now when you get to the mouth area, you're gonna wanna do a dark value around, so we're kinda working around white hairs. So try and think of it that way. And the reason why we want it especially darker is because the chin is sticking out farther than what's behind it. And so to give us that separation of what's in front and what's behind, you gotta put dark right underneath it.
and then don't forget to lighten it up. We want a really light value on the edges. Now the top part might be a little bit dark for me. I might go back and do another layer and lighten that up a little bit um, because I like the barely there color. It makes it feel, because like hair doesn't have like a black outline around hair. If you look at somebody's hair, it kind of like fades away. Like there's not such a strong, really what it is is like what's around it sticks out more and that's how you know it ends. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Why yes. don't you just just think say, on that for that for a second? Well, yes. <laughs> so just to like illustrate to you guys this is a light value on the left hand side of this mouth this is a dark value you see how that white sticks out so much more like it's actually in front of it where this one you're like well i can see that one's kind of behind but i can't tell how far away so just like how dark that is is really communicating to our viewer that it's like no 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 this hair is way in front of this other hair you know I do know. If that was a question directed to me, I, I would like to answer it. Yes, so you know. <laughs> the answer is yes. And you can even like drop in some water and get some fun water textures. Like water color makes the coolest things accidentally. So let yourself play with it. And then I'm just using water and the color that's already there. Okay, and now before we move on from the main, I want you to just like go in and like, you can even use your round two for this and do some like stray hairs, like really play with the different texture edge. Cause you, if you look right here, how this is now, these marks are all very similar. I need to switch that up. So I need to like, I'm gonna throw in some thin hairs coming out. Some split ends maybe. Some split ends. This hair is wild, so it's going in different directions. And sometimes like, I'm just using the color of my dirty water now to do this edge part. Oh yeah, and let's get some going on back here. I'm gonna lighten up. So I'm just using this dirty water and grabbing a little bit of color and just doing a lighter value here at the top. I don't have to totally blend out these lines. There are layers of hair within the mane, so it's okay if some of them like poke out in front of the other ones. That's totally fine, because that's how we would see it. And that's untamed hair. It is untamed hair. It's wild. Yeah. Look at that texture from that water drop. Yes. So, I saw that a minute ago. so oh. good. I'm going to do another drop over here. And if you were like, man, I really like these water textures I got over here, but I didn't do that on this side. Well, guess what, my friend? Just re-wet the area. Put that orange back in. Then do a water drop. And you're gonna still get some cool stuff. Okay, this is totally a multicolored mane. It's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna do another layer right underneath this white chin. So I want to make sure it's clear that it's nice and dark. Give it that depth. And then if you want to like, for me, I'm just like, man, I need to really darken this area up a little bit more. 
just making it really clear that around the face it's a little bit darker. Look at that lion. He's becoming more of a lion. I know, isn't it amazing? He just clearly a few doesn't steps. use conditioner though. <laughs> <laughs> do you use conditioner? Keenan? No, I do not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you giving this lion crap for? Not crap. I'm just <laughs> noting that he's wild. He is wild. <laughs> okay. Call me out. <laughs> <laughs> now there is one little thing that I want to do before I move on to coloring the eyes and the nose. Is this mouth, it's white, but as we have learned before, just because something is white doesn't mean there's hints of other colors there. Nothing is like pure white. You can tell by like holding up a piece of white paper to something that you think is white and then you'd be like, oh shoot, that's not white at all. Like the tissue versus teeth test. Yeah, don't do that. That just makes you sad because you're like, I have white teeth and then you hold up. <laughs> I've never thought I had white teeth. But... <laughs> I've thought I had white teeth before and then I held up something white to it and I was like, no. Okay, so we're going to add just a little bit of color into the mouth of our lion. So I'm going to take this like soft, creamy khaki, kind of similar to what we used in the lighter values. <laughs> and you mean khaki. Khaki. And I'm gonna put that like where that mouth opening is and then softly blend out. So I want the very edges of this mouth, chin, hair thing to be white, but I want it to transition into with like a soft hint of color. And that just adds a little bit of depth to it and that's why it's not like white, blinding, sticking out, being distracting. Okay, now we are going to move on to step four. We're gonna do the eye color and the nose color. So grab your round twos, Keith or Hank? Definitely Keith. Definitely Keith, if you guessed Keith as number two, you were right. You win <laughs> the feeling of correctness. <laughs> So for the eyes, they're kind of like a yellow, orangish color. But I'm gonna stay more in the yellow. So when you do the eyeballs, I have three little dots within our eyes. One of the dots acts as pupil. The other two are glare spots. So you're gonna do, I want you to do yellow and work around the dots. Are you getting that on close up? Tell me if I need to move. I'm getting as close as I can. And then to give our eyes, because everything has a value change, like everything does. And to give our eyes that look that they are realistic is there is actually a shadow on the top part of our eyes because the brow is casting a shadow like the lid is casting a shadow onto the eyes and that we see that. So near the top, I want you to do a darker value near the top of the eyes. Put a little bit of orange or brown in there at the top and then softly blend it out. And that's gonna make our eyes look more realistic. And it's just at the top part of those eyeballs, okay? That's it for our eyes, and now we're gonna move on to the nose. So the nose, the front part of our nose is kind of like a pinkish color. You can add a little bit of yellow to it to kind of tone it down so it's that skin tone of like peach. And I'm gonna put just in that center this little peach color. If you want your lion to have a stronger pink nose, then you can use just fuchsia because we want that color to kind of differentiate between what's around it. So let's give it a little bit stronger kick of pink. But this is up to you. If, you, if you're like, that looks like makeup or something, well, you don't have to do that to your lion. It's okay, it's yours, and this one's mine. So I'm really just like this center V right here, that's what I'm coloring pink. Okay. That was it for that. That was super easy. <laughs> Just a really quick, easy step. So then the next step, I think it's step five. We're gonna do the black areas. So 
get your round two, pick up some black. Now you wanna make sure your eyes are dry at this point if they're still wet. If they're wet, like I can tell that's still wet because it's still glary and I can just tell. Don't do this part because you wanna keep it clean. You don't want things to bleed together. So once it's dry, you're gonna go in and you're gonna put in the black section. So you're just gonna follow this outline. So it goes on the bottom, on the front and on the back. And also just a very thin line at the top. And then our pupil. So our pupil is gonna be like the center Okay, there's one eye. I should have done the other one first because now my hand is going to be there, so I'm just going to turn my paper. Ooh, can you see that still? Yes. I'm not talking during this part because it's focus time. And then the pupil. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna do the nose and the mouth. Again, you wanna make sure it's dry. And so I'm gonna like line the bottom of the lips, like the lip cheeks a little bit. I'm gonna put in this like where the mouth parts a little bit. So just like this little V or triangle. And then this black line fills in the rest of the nose that we didn't paint. And what's really gonna make our nose seem realistic is we're not gonna stop here. We are going to wet our brush a little bit so it's just kind of damp. And we're gonna softly blend that black at the bottom because we want the pink, we don't want it to be outlined. We want there to be a transition period where it kind of transitions into the pink. So it like goes to a gray area and it's gonna be on like the sides and the bottom of the nose. And that gives our nose just a little bit more like shape and depth because there is a value change. I feel like the outline kind of like goes up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. And noses are lopsided, so it's okay if yours gets a little bit funky. And then that same idea, we're gonna do that with the mouth. So this black triangle I put in, using a damp brush, I'm gonna blend this out so it transitions to my white. Like so. And then, this is where I want you, that's it for the black. Good job, you guys. We're in our very last steps. Nailed it. Step number six, we're gonna do details. This is where you're gonna see, okay, what parts are distracting? Oh, wait, 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 no, we forgot one black part, sorry. They have the whisker dots on their, um, mat, on their cheeks. So it's like dot, 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 dot. Just a little bit. There we go, okay, kinda like freckles. Now, now we're on to the last step, which is details. This is where you take a second. Now, I noticed that I left a really thin white line above both of my eyes, and I want to blend those out. I don't want these white spaces on the top. So I'm just gonna use the color that's at the top part and blend out and get rid of those white spaces. And 
And you can do that wherever. See, this is the hard thing with following an outline is there's gonna be little areas where there's just white chunks from when we painted one section and another. And uh, you can leave them if they don't bother you. I don't think there's a wrong way. Um, or if you want, you just like blend them out just with a damp brush. And again, take a look and be like, okay, what can I do? Is there anything I can really do to add to this? I'm gonna do like little drops of more color because I just love just strong areas of color. You don't have to do that to yours. This is your painting. So if that doesn't feel right for you, don't do it. And if you got to redo any of the dark areas, please feel free to. Oh, and the other thing that you can do for details is you see here in my example, I have these kind of dark little wisp lines. So you can put a couple of those in where you're just like, but there's a hair and maybe that's a little wave. And, and these are kind of like different shadows of different chunks of hair like being separated kind of thing. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to, but if you just want to do that nice little like, feel free and you can do orange, you can do it in whatever color you want. I'm doing like an orange or dark brown. You just want it to show up. So you just want it to be a slightly darker value. Maybe I'll do some more pink up here. Now, um, if you want, your eyes to have a little bit more of that look as if the lion is like looking up at you from underneath its brow, then you're gonna want to connect your pupil like to the top black part. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to do another line of black on the top part of my eyeball on this lion. And so if that, the closer that pupil is from for that top, line that's going to give it that heavy hooded eye look is that that is cool so if your eyes lion's eyes are looking too wide and you don't like that and you really want it to look like it's like looking up at you or like has that kind of like relaxed look like a heavy hooded eyeball look then you're just going to move that top black line down to meet the top of that pupil I just want a bit of yellow on the mouth. Yeah. Ugh, I just love doing drops of yellow places. It makes me so happy. <laughs> you don't have to do this. It's up to you. You guys, you did it. Great job. See, that wasn't that bad, right? That was so good. I know, it's just because the mane, lions have manes, and so you're like, done. I know what that is. So if you painted this, I really want to see it. Oh, we should name this lion. What do you think? Uh, Mufasa. No, don't take a lion, King Lion. Come on, Keenan. He's the best lion. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry I like, sorry I did that in front of everybody. <laughs> um, He's kind of chill. Uh -huh. He's a Marley. Isn't that a dog's name? There is, or there's like Bob Marley, you know? Oh, chill. Chill. I gotcha. Marley. That feels right. I like that. Marley. Okay. Don't forget to name your lion. And if you painted it, I want to see it. Everyone's going to look different because we have water textures and we have color and it's your painting and nobody can paint like you can paint. So we want to see it. Uh, if you're on Instagram, tag us in it, let's go make art, or hashtag let's make art. Those are two different names, and I'm really sorry about that. We have a Facebook group. Uh, we have a Facebook, so you can tag us in it on Facebook. 
under the same thing, let's go make ours our Facebook tag, or we have a really wonderful Facebook community separate from our business called Let's Make Art Watercolor. It's not separate from our business, like we host it, but it's just a way for our community to show what they painted. And so you can go there, you can see what people are working on, and it's really just about sharing art. It's a really wonderful supportive group if you're nervous about posting this in your personal stuff. So post it, share it, be brave. You guys can do this, you're amazing. That's all I gotta say, bye.